13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do As a psychotherapist for over a decade, Amy Morin assisted clients in identifying their talents, skills, and support systems. She addressed their struggles by emphasizing their strengths, which was an effective approach. However, her approach changed after she faced personal tragedy and lost three close people in a short period. This led to a cycle of grief and she found that just focusing on her strengths and ignoring her weaknesses was not helping her to heal. To become a stronger, better person, she realized she needed to address the negative habits that were holding her back. Amy Morin's struggles taught her that small bad habits can have a significant impact on progress. To reach one's full potential, it is important to focus on working efficiently and eliminate habits that weaken mental strength. She suggests learning the 13 things that mentally strong people avoid to achieve this. Chapter 1. Waste time feeling sorry for themselves. It is unavoidable that life presents us with unexpected challenges and difficulties. Sometimes, these challenges can be so devastating that it may seem impossible to recover. However, mentally strong individuals do not allow these difficult moments to define them or hold them back. They understand that when life knocks them down, it is essential to learn how to get back up. For example, author Amy Morin faced a series of personal tragedies, including the loss of her mother, husband, and father-in-law within a decade. Instead of allowing herself to be consumed by self-pity, she recognized that dwelling on her problems would not be beneficial for her mental health. She understood that self-pity only keeps one focused on the problem and prevents one from finding a solution. Mentally strong individuals understand the importance of focusing on gratitude as opposed to self-pity. The story of Marla Runyon serves as an inspiration of how gratitude and mental strength can aid in overcoming difficult situations. Runyon was diagnosed with Stargardt's disease at a young age, a degenerative condition that affects the eyes eventually causing her to become legally blind. Instead of viewing her disease as a hindrance, she channeled her passion for running and went on to set world records in the 1992 and 1996 Paralympics. Many individuals tend to focus on what they are missing out on, rather than being grateful for what they have. It is important to note that gratitude can have a positive impact on physical health as well. A study published in the Journal of Personality and social psychology in 2003 found that individuals who express gratitude have stronger immune systems and experience less physical pain and discomfort. Additionally, these individuals tend to exercise more, sleep better, and overall lead healthier lives when compared to those who lack gratitude. Chapter 2. Give away their power. It's common to hear people say things like my boss makes me feel inadequate or my mother-in-law makes me crazy. However, when you give others control over your emotions and actions, you're giving away your own power. Instead of allowing others to influence your thoughts and behavior, change your language to reflect the fact that you are in control of your own choices. For example, instead of saying he made me mad, say I'm choosing to feel angry. Remember, Mental strength comes from recognizing that you have control over your own emotions and actions. A great example of this is Oprah Winfrey, who despite facing poverty and sexual abuse, took control of her own life and became a successful media mogul. As a young girl, Oprah Winfrey dreamed of escaping her tough circumstances and making something of herself. Through hard work and determination, she landed a job as a television news anchor. But even then, she faced challenges she was fired from her job for being deemed unsuitable for the role. But Winfrey didn't let the opinions of others hold her back. Instead, she pushed forward and ultimately became one of the most successful talk show hosts of all time. So, how did she achieve such remarkable success? One key factor was her ability to forgive. Holding on to anger and resentment can limit your potential and disrupt your life. That's why it's so important to let go of these negative emotions and focus on yourself. Just as practicing gratitude can have positive effects on your physical health, forgiveness can have psychological benefits as well. Studies have shown that people who forgive others have lower blood pressure and calmer heartbeats, 
and may even live longer lives. Chapter 3. Shy Away From Change Have you ever thought about how you view change? Do you welcome it with open arms or do you prefer sticking to your old ways? It's important to think about because it can have a big impact on your mental strength. If you keep making excuses to avoid change, you'll find that your life stays stagnant and you won't make any progress. Instead, it's important to embrace change, prepare for challenges, and commit to it in order to find success. Take Judge Greg Mathis for example, he was a troublemaker as a teenager and was constantly in and out of jail. But when he found out his mom was dying, he promised her that he would turn his life around. After he got out of jail, he got a job at McDonald's and worked hard to get into Eastern Michigan University. After graduation, he wanted to go to law school but his criminal past kept him from becoming a lawyer. Despite the obstacles he faced, he embraced change and worked hard to turn his life around. A lot of people might just give up or find a new path when faced with a tough obstacle. But Judge Mathis didn't let that stop him. He looked for ways to change and serve his community. After working as a manager for Detroit neighborhood City Hall, he and his wife started a nonprofit that helped young people find jobs. And even with his criminal past, he was elected as a judge by the people of Detroit. He really believed that anything was possible if you embraced change and worked towards it. Have you ever heard of Morin's Five Steps of Change? It's a way to help people make changes in their lives. The first step is pre-contemplation where people first become aware that they need to change, but might not fully understand the consequences of not changing. Like, a doctor might tell a patient they need to exercise to avoid health risks. The second step is contemplation where a person starts to realize they need to change, but might not be fully committed yet. Like, an employee may know they need to improve their sales but not yet sure if a new technique is worth it. The third step is preparation where a plan for change is made. Like, an entrepreneur figuring out how to increase revenue. The fourth step is action where the plan is put into action. Like, a person starting to exercise and change their diet. And the last step is maintenance where you learn how to keep the change long term. Like, a person planning ahead to avoid high calorie foods during the holidays to maintain their healthy lifestyle. Chapter 4. Focus on things they can't control. Sometimes, we might feel like we need to control and fix everything. This is called the superhero complex. This way of thinking can be bad for our mental and emotional health, and can also affect our relationships and the trust others have in us. It's important to let go of things we can't control and not worry about them. A good example is Terry Fox, who was diagnosed with a serious type of cancer at 18. He had to have one of his legs amputated and was told that he only had a 15% chance of getting better. But before his surgery, he saw someone with a prosthetic leg running a marathon, and it inspired him. After his surgery, he started running and eventually ran a marathon himself. After determining to raise funds for cancer research, Fox sought out sponsors for a cross-country race. He aimed to run the equivalent of one marathon per day, but had to abandon the race due to the return of his own cancer. Despite this, his story inspired donations and he was able to raise $23 million for charity before his death. Fox exemplifies how focusing on what we can control, rather than what we cannot, can lead to both personal and societal benefits. A 2012 study supports this, revealing that individuals with a less controlling mindset lead happier lives and have stronger relationships. Chapter 5. Worry About Pleasing Everyone when you're always trying to make everyone happy, it can actually be bad for your mental health. People who are always trying to please others are just trying to control how others feel, which is impossible and a waste of time and energy. If you find yourself worrying too much about making everyone happy, you should focus on making choices that align with your own values, even if it means disappointing others. Take this woman, Angela, for example. She would try to please the men she dated by pretending to be someone she wasn't. If a guy liked humor, 
she would try to tell jokes. If he liked spontaneity, she would make up stories to seem more spontaneous. But by trying to be someone she wasn't, she lost sight of who she really was. In the end, she only cared about what others wanted and didn't speak her own truth. Living like this will make you mentally weak, but when you accept that you can't please everyone, you'll become stronger and build courage to handle the possibility of displeasing others. Chapter 6 Fear Taking Calculated Risks A lot of people are scared of taking risks, whether it's in their job or in chasing their dreams. They're worried that the risks outweigh the benefits. But it's not just about quitting your job and going for it. You have to think things through and weigh the risks. If you do decide to quit your job and follow your passion, there's a chance you might fail. And if you do fail, you might be too scared to take risks again. So, it's important to learn how to minimize risks and figure out which ones are worth it. Ask yourself questions like what are the potential costs and benefits? How will this affect my goals? What are the alternatives? What is the best and worst thing that can happen? How much will this matter in five years? Write down the answers to these questions and review them to help you make a decision. Taking risks doesn't have to be a big life decision. It can be something small like the example of famous psychologist Albert Ellis, who was scared of talking to women because of the risk of rejection. But after thinking about the consequences, he realized that rejection isn't that bad, so he started talking to women. Ellis made a daily habit of visiting the botanical garden and seeking out women who were sitting alone. Of the 130 women he approached, 30 immediately left upon his arrival. However, for the remaining 100 women, Ellis struck up conversation and extended an invitation for a date. Unfortunately, only one woman accepted his offer and ultimately failed to show up for the planned date. Despite this disappointment, Ellis learned a valuable lesson his fear of rejection had been holding him back. He came to realize that taking risks and stepping out of one's comfort zone can lead to personal growth and strength. He encourages others to confront their fears and open themselves up to new opportunities, whether it be through flying on a plane or public speaking. Chapter 7. Dwell on the Past Winona Ward's past was filled with trauma and abuse, growing up with a sexually and physically abusive father in a small village in Vermont. She kept the abuse a secret, and at 17, she married and became a truck driver. However, her efforts to leave her past behind were not entirely successful as she later discovered that one of her brothers was now perpetuating the cycle of abuse with his own children. This realization prompted Ward to take action and break the cycle of abuse. She went back to university in Vermont and earned a law degree and founded Have Justice Will Travel, an organization that provides mobile legal services to families dealing with domestic abuse problems. Through her own experience and determination, Ward was able to use her past to learn, grow, and help others. The key to moving on from the past is to give ourselves permission to enjoy life and to remember the lessons we learn from our experiences. Additionally, it's important to look at situations objectively, forgive past actions, and even forgive ourselves to release the burden of carrying negative emotions. Ward's story serves as a reminder that the past doesn't have to haunt us forever and that there is always hope for a better future. Chapter 8 make the same mistakes. Many of us have been conditioned to view mistakes as embarrassing or shameful, whether it be getting a question wrong or bringing home a poor grade. However, it's important to remember that mistakes are simply opportunities for growth. Mentally strong individuals learn from their mistakes and take steps to avoid repeating them in the future. An inspiring example of this is Roland Macy, who opened a dry goods store in a small Massachusetts town in the mid-19th century. Despite choosing a less-than-ideal location, he didn't let his mistake define him. He organized a parade to attract customers, but it was rained out and he was forced to close his store. He vowed not to make the same mistake again and opened a new store in a prime location in downtown New York, which became a huge success. Today, Macy's is a worldwide department store chain, 
and they even host the popular Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade every year. To avoid making the same mistake, it's important to study it and ask yourself what went wrong, what you could have done better, and what you can do differently in the future. It's also important to acknowledge your mistakes and take responsibility for them, as this will help you build mental strength and control over your actions. Chapter 9. Resent Other People's Success Envy is a natural emotion that can arise when we see others achieving success. But allowing envy to consume us can lead to resentment and a sense of failure. Instead, it's better to use the success of others to our advantage. A prime example of this is the story of Milton Hershey and H. B. Reese. Reese began building a rival candy company while still working at Hershey's Chocolate Factory, but Hershey didn't become resentful or angry. Instead, he gave Reese his support and allowed him to use Hershey's milk chocolate in his experiments. This resulted in Reese creating the peanut butter cup surrounded by Hershey's milk chocolate. Instead of viewing each other's company as competition, they used each other's strengths to build successful businesses. They continued to collaborate throughout their lives and eventually merged their companies. The lesson to be learned from this story is that when we celebrate and enjoy the success of others, it creates opportunities for collaboration and continued success. Chapter 10. Give up after first failure. Many people are plagued by the fear of failure, often avoiding taking risks to avoid it. However, the road to success is often filled with failures and perseverance. Those who are successful view their failures as opportunities for growth and improvement. A prime example of this is Thomas Edison, who is known for inventing the light bulb, but also had many other inventions that were complete failures. Edison viewed these unsuccessful inventions as learning opportunities and each one brought him closer to success. Research shows that hard work and commitment are more important than natural talent when it comes to success. Even those without natural talent can reach high levels of success with consistent practice and dedication. To overcome failure, one should create a plan to learn from their mistakes, prepare for failure, and not be afraid to fail. Failure is simply a part of the journey to success. Chapter 11. Fear Alone Time. In today's fast-paced and noisy world, it's easy to become overwhelmed by the constant sounds and distractions around us. From the hum of traffic on our commute to work, to the chatter and meetings at the office, our days are filled with noise. But when we come home, many of us seek to fill that quiet time with more noise turning on the TV, scrolling through social media, or listening to music. However, research shows that this constant noise can be detrimental to our mental and physical well-being. To build your mental strength and find inner peace, it's essential to take time each day to be alone with your thoughts and silence. This can be as simple as setting aside 10 minutes each day to sit in quiet contemplation, reflecting on your goals and dreams, and visualizing the life you want to live. Write these thoughts down in a journal to keep track of your progress. Additionally, try incorporating small habits into your daily routine such as turning off the radio in your car or taking a walk without your phone. These small actions can help decrease anxiety and depression and increase mindfulness. For an even deeper level of peace and well-being, consider taking up meditation. Studies have shown that regular meditation can positively alter the structure of the brain, reducing symptoms of chronic pain, insomnia, and other health issues. By becoming comfortable with solitude and silence, you can improve your quality of life and build mental strength. Chapter 12. Feel the world owes them anything. Nowadays, many children are raised with an overabundance of praise and encouragement, without being taught the importance of taking responsibility for their actions. This can lead to a sense of entitlement, where they believe the world owes them something. One example of this is Ethan Couch, a Texas teenager who, in 2013, killed four people while driving under the influence. Due to his privileged upbringing and lack of responsibility taught by his parents, Couch's lawyers argued in court that he suffered from affluenza and was unable to take responsibility for his actions. 
Shockingly, this defense worked and Couch received only probation and rehabilitation instead of prison time. But it's not just wealthy parents who contribute to this sense of entitlement. We may also find ourselves giving advice to friends that suggests they should wait for something good to happen to them, instead of taking action to better their own lives. Mentally strong individuals understand that the world doesn't owe them anything and focus on giving back, rather than taking. For instance, Sarah Robinson, an activist, was diagnosed with a brain tumor at a young age. During her battle with cancer, she noticed that many patients had to travel long distances for treatment. She decided to take action and founded an overnight house for patients to stay in near medical facilities. Despite her passing, the house continues to provide a home for those in need even after her death. Chapter 13. Expect Immediate Results Success is often a slow and steady process, and it requires a great deal of patience. Unfortunately, many of us struggle to maintain our resolve when progress is not immediate. This was highlighted in a study from 1972, which found that 25% of participants abandoned their New Year's resolutions after just 15 weeks. And in a 1989 study, that number dropped to an even more alarming one week. So why do we struggle to stick to our goals? One reason is that we often set unrealistic expectations for ourselves, which sets us up for disappointment and failure. Another reason is that we fail to understand that change is not easy and takes hard work and dedication. Additionally, we often create rigid deadlines for ourselves, which can be disheartening when we fail to meet them. Instead, we should focus on progress, not perfection, and understand that it might take longer than expected to reach our goals. Remember, success is not always obvious and progress may be hidden. Keep pushing forward and don't give up, even when it feels like you're not making any headway. Patience and perseverance are the keys to achieving success. Chapter 14. Final Summary. Are you ready to unleash the power of your mind and become a true mental powerhouse? It all starts with embracing a mentality of strength and refusing to give in to feelings of self-pity or powerlessness. You must take control of your own life and not allow others to dictate your path. Embrace change and overcome the fear of the unknown. Stop worrying about things you can't control and start focusing on what you can. Understand that pleasing everyone is an impossible task, so don't be afraid to take calculated risks and go after what you truly want. Learn from your past mistakes and never make the same ones twice. Celebrate the success of others and don't be envious of their accomplishments. In the face of failure, never give up. Conquer your fears and don't expect the world to owe you anything. Success doesn't come overnight. It takes hard work and perseverance. To become mentally strong, start by monitoring your own behavior, paying attention to your feelings and examining your thoughts. Look within yourself and identify your weaknesses. With this self-awareness, you can begin to strengthen your mind and reach your full potential. So, are you ready to rise above mediocrity and become a true mental powerhouse? The choice is yours. Thank you for watching our summary of the book 13 Things Mentally Strong People Don't Do. We hope you found the information helpful in your journey to becoming mentally strong. Remember, Building mental strength is a lifelong process, but it is worth it. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more book summaries and self-improvement content. Thank you.